Good morning everyone and welcome to this online service for St Kenneth's Parish Church. Welcome if you've been with us since the start of lockdown. Welcome if you've come across our pages in more recent times. This morning um, service is resumed for people who wish to come in person to worship in our church buildings as a congregation but we have a limited capacity and there are also those who may not wish to come out at present and so I'll continue to provide these online services. Today we're going to start um, a series in the theme of hope. I'm going to pick up the Apostles' Creed on Wednesday um, midweek musings. But we're going to start a series in the theme of hope because I think it speaks to where we are in the world at the moment. And as we begin our worship today, I want to turn to some words from the Book of Lamentations. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. Let us worship God. Let us pray. It is good for us to be here, Lord God, gathered as your people, and it is good for us to recall that our hope in you is secure and firm. For indeed your love never ceases, for indeed your compassion never fails, for indeed your mercies are new every morning. Secure in you and in all that you give us, we bring you our worship and offer our praise for Jesus' sake. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have life and have it to the full. Sometimes we forget that, and we live as though we have no reason to hope. Thank you that you love us enough to accept us, even when we struggle to accept you. And thank you too for your wonderful forgiveness, which we seek again as we confess the ways in which we have gone wrong. As we have sought your forgiveness, we also receive your forgiveness, which gives us hope to start again, empowered by the Holy Spirit for your service. Hear our prayer, Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Our scriptures are brought to us this morning by Norman Cooper. I read from the first letter from Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9, A Living Hope. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of Lord Jesus Christ, because of his great mercy he gave us new life by raising Jesus Christ from death. This fills us with a living hope, and so we look forward to possessing the rich blessings that God keeps for his people. He keeps them for you in heaven, where they cannot decay or spoil or fade away. They are for you, who through faith are kept safe by God's power for the salvation which is ready to be revealed at the end of time. Be glad about this, even though it may now be necessary for you to be sad for a while because of the many kinds of trials you suffer. Their purpose is to prove that your faith is genuine. Even gold, which can be destroyed, is tested by fire, 
And so your faith, which is much more precious than gold, must also be tested, so that it may endure. Then you will receive praise and honour and glory on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed. You love him, although you have not seen him, and you believe in him, although you do not know, now see him. So you rejoice with a great and glorious joy, which words cannot express, because you are receiving the salvation of your souls, which is the purpose of your faith in him. Amen. Hope is a word which is used often rather glibly in our society today. I hope East Fife win on Saturday, that's a local reference. I hope the road is clear of traffic for my journey home. I hope the sun shines tomorrow. These hopes that we might have are hopes which are grounded entirely in our circumstances. Whereas, as we can come to consider the Christian hope, described in part at least by these verses from Peter's first letter, we discover that a Christian hope is a hope of an entirely different order. And at the outset we might ask ourselves the question, is our hope dependent upon our circumstances or is it dependent upon Christ? For the hope that is dependent upon Christ has about it a very particular character. It is an eternal hope. It is a sure hope. And it is firstly a living hope. It is a living hope because we worship a risen Jesus. In verse 3 of our passage we read, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The point is this, had Jesus died and stayed dead, then he would have been a good man who had done some good things. But no one would be able to place their hope in him now as one dead and buried. They and we would simply be admiring a long dead wise teacher. Peter's fellow Apostle Paul puts it this way in his first letter to the Corinthians. If there is no resurrection from the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God, that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ we are of all people most to be pitied. In other words our hope is a living hope, because our Saviour is a living Saviour. Our preaching, our faith, our testimony are all grounded in the reality that Jesus lives today. If Jesus were dead, we could admire him, but we could not trust him. We can continue to trust him and experience his activity in our lives precisely because he lives. In the words of the hymn, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Secondly, we see that the hope which is dependent upon Christ is an eternal hope kept in heaven for us. Verse 4 speaks of an inheritance that can never, never perish, spoil or fade, and teaches 
that this inheritance is kept in heaven for us. Put simply, an eternal hope is a hope that, if we're Christ's, can never be taken from us. I'm sure many of you can think of items in your house that have been with you for many years. Perhaps they're family heirlooms, your parents' best china or whatever. Hopefully many of these items are still in good condition, but the reality is that sooner or later material things fade. They, are no, long they no longer have the shine they once did. Perhaps there are even some items that are no longer useful to us because their function has been taken over by advances in technology. Sometimes we may lament that fact and argue that the items we cherish are of a higher quality than the newer ones. I say all of that to reinforce the point. Our material possessions have a shelf life even the best of them, but we do not. If we're Christ's, if we have said yes to him and accepted his gift of salvation, then no matter how old we get, we will always have a part to play in the purposes of God. This is our hope, and it is ours for eternity. Thirdly and finally we see that the hope which is dependent upon Christ is a sure hope, even in the face of trials. In verses 6 and 7, In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honour when Christ Jesus is revealed. These verses encourage us to believe, even when we face trials, we have reason to rejoice. We have reason to hope. I hardly need list the trials which Covid has brought to all of us. And of course some have been affected directly in the loss of dear ones to the virus or through their own illness. We will pray for all such in a moment, but there is a sure hope in these verses. And that is that whilst there have been and will be trials to pass through, they will not last forever. The text says that the people Peter was writing to, and by extension we who are believers today, will endure trials for a little while. Paul's, Peter's perspective is that in God's timing, it will be but a little while until Jesus returns, and when he does, there will be no more trials for the believer to face. But even now, if your faith is genuine and you have the Holy Spirit living in your heart, you are being fashioned into someone who will give praise, glory and honour to God forever. As I draw to a conclusion, I return to the question with which I started. Is your hope dependent upon circumstances or upon Christ? For if your hope is dependent upon Christ, then ultimately your circumstances will not overcome you. You will not fail, or perhaps more importantly, he will not fail you. So hold fast to Jesus and let him hold you through the days which lie ahead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of his Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now in prayer, this time with our prayers of thanksgiving and of intercession. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come thankful for the hope that we have in you, a hope that is living, eternal and secure. Placing our security in you, we are so aware of how insecure our world feels just now, and so we come to pray for all people 
in all places where there is no hope. Hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. We pray for all who have been acutely affected by COVID over these months and who feel like hope is gone. Draw near to all who are ill with the virus. Draw near to all who care for them. Draw near to their families and friends. Grant to them such a sense of your presence that they might indeed take hold of your hope and your peace. We pray for our government in Edinburgh and in Westminster. Grant wisdom and courage to our leaders. Grant them peace as they grapple with difficult decisions. Grant us the humility to continue to pray for them. And now, O oh God, we bring to you our own personal prayers. Grant hope and healing to the sick. Grant hope and comfort to the bereaved. Grant hope and peace to the troubled. Hear us as we name those known to us in the silence of our hearts. Father, take our prayers and answer them, not merely according to our asking, but according to your love and purpose for us and for all those for whom we have prayed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, blessed for ever. Amen. Once again, can I thank you for joining with me today, and there will be I hope we'll be using this, this coming Wednesday as well. And I refer those of you who are members of the congregation back to the letter which should now be with you um, with regard to arrangements for in-person worship. Should you need a, a refresher, these are also available. Um, a version of the letter is also available on stkenneth.org.uk. The details for booking the service are there. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who by grace has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good word and deed. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide upon each and every one of you, and all whom you love, those with you now, those further afield, and those now at rest and gathered with their Maker now, and even forevermore. Amen.